Let's talk about double action revolvers, why I like them, and why you might too. Number one, simplicity and ease of use. A revolver is easy to load. Drop cartridges, close cylinder, go on with your day. Personally, I clear my carry guns every time I come home. Doing with this with a semi-auto like my Dan Wesson TCP will bang up the cartridges over time, chambering and rechambering. And I've had a few bullets pushed into their casings doing this. A revolver keeps this process simple and friction-free. Firing is also as simple as it gets. The double action trigger requires no safety manipulation or transition into a single action trigger. It's draw and shoot every single time. A revolver is also much more tolerant of neglect than an automatic might be. Especially on metal frame pistols, it's expected that you lubricate your gun every now and then if you want to keep it running. Leaving magazines loaded will also wear them out. Or it won't, depending on what forum or YouTube comment you're reading. Either way, it won't happen with a revolver, if it does at all. Right now, there's a 686 loaded in a shoulder holster with two speed loaders in my safe. In case of a grab-and-go scenario, such as a tsunami or a volcano eruption when I would like to keep a low profile, uh, concealing a 357 Magnum revolver under a jacket ought to be enough to defend myself in the early hours or days of an uncertain scenario. Moving on to point number two, adaptability and customizability. You have a lot of options when it comes to revolver ergonomics. Right now, mine is wearing G10 grips from VZ with a diamond checkered pattern, but you can go smoother, more aggressive, wood, rubber, and all sorts of different shapes are available too. You can have grips with, it with or without finger grooves, covered back straps, oversized target grips for recoil management and prolonged rage use, all the way down to diminutive, highly concealable boot grips. And at least with the Smith & Wesson and Ruger aftermarket, you'll be spoiled for choice. We've also got a lot of variety in sights. Stock sights are usually enough, but I like Dawson Precision front fiber optic sights. You can have tritium, gold beads, fixed rears, adjustable rears, and lots of red dot mounts are out there. A Smith can also bob your existing hammer, or you can install a bobbed hammer from Apex. With so many options for revolvers and a healthy aftermarket for whatever you choose, you can dial yours in just the way you want it. Let's move on to number three, power and versatility. While automatics like the Desert Eagle exist, there's no denying how proven high-powered revolvers are in a much more versatile package. And while 10 millimeter and 357 Magnum are comparable calibers, I don't think anyone but the most zealous of 10 millimeter fanatics will argue that it doesn't come anywhere near the power of 44 Magnum. If you're looking for as much power as possible in the palm of your hand, your best options are probably going to be revolvers. I went with 357 Magnum over others because it retains power at a greater distance than 9mm, it's a decades proven combat cartridge, and I can still make quick enough follow up shots if need be. If you're not a fan of Magnum cartridges, there's interchangeability with other calibers such as the very soft shooting 38 Special. You can even get revolvers in 9mm that accept moon clips, if you like that. Then we have bullet weights, bullet material. If you can have hollow points and soft points, as well as hard cast lead, all of which don't have any feeding and timing to worry about. Drop it into your cylinder and you know it will go. Number four, reliability. Although somewhat controversial in the 21st century, the topic of revolver reliability has been a discussion in the last decade. Revolvers have been called more reliable than automatics, but there is a misconception out there that revolvers do not malfunction. While you can't have a failure to feed or a failure to eject with one, problems can happen. But what detractors of revolvers call malfunctions are the equivalent of a Glock or M&P having a catastrophic BART breakage and seem to make them out to be a lot more common than they actually are. The truth of the matter is, when it comes to revolvers and reliability, is as long as you're not trying to deliberately damage your revolver, it will work. Regardless of full metal jacket, hollow point, hard cast lead projectiles, or underpowered ammunition, no matter what you put in it, it will fire. And it still won't fail to feed or extract. Another point I'd like to make about reliability is their inherent advantage in a grappling self-defense scenario. If I'm in kissing range with an attacker and the only room I have to fight is to press this Glock into their body, 
I won't be able to pull the trigger as it comes out of battery. A revolver doesn't have this issue. A counterpoint I often hear is that they can grab your cylinder and pretend it to prevent it from turning. Excuse me. My own counter to that is if they have grabbed your cylinder, you can twist it in the opposite direction so that the cylinder forces into battery. The final point I'd like to make is carryability and concealability. The shape of a revolver is unlike most semi-autos. The curve of this K-frame, for example, despite its size, when paired with this JM Custom Kydex holster that I've slightly modified, does a fantastic job of hugging right against my body. The thickest part of a revolver is usually going to be the cylinder or the grip. We've already talked about grips and how you can give them towards concealment. The cylinder itself on this K-frame, and on most 6-shot 357s, is going to be about 1.5 inches in diameter, and a good holster will tuck it in right at your belt line. The barrel and frame are very slender, thinner than even the Glock 48 or the vaunted single stack 1911. When I'm wearing this, I'm not going to say I don't notice it, but the length of the barrel and protrusion of the grip is definitely unnoticed, even in appendix carry. If you want an even smaller package, Smith & Wesson J-Frames, Kimper K6s, Colt Cobras, the list goes on with compact revolvers with all the advantages we've talked about already. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and that you'll give one of these a try, if not your main carrier defense piece, maybe one would serve you well as a tool in the toolbox. Thanks for watching.